Cool guys, hope you're doing great. I'm back and I'm here to share with you a few tips that came to my mind the last few weeks as as many things has happened. Great. Uh, where to start? This this will be more of a, like just just me sharing um the things. I guess like I won't even edit that because I currently don't have time for that. Even delegating to the team members, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Where to start? Uh, that, that's a great idea. I guess like. There have been many instances where I've just came to realize that many things that I've been doing in the past didn't really make sense, or that like they, they were essentially many things that I would have done differently uh, looking forward. Uh, the first one being just, so to say, better allocation of time. Right now, after spending two and a half years in the university, I really would perhaps reconsider my decision back when I was doing it in, I guess, October, or not October, it was pretty much like July, um, August, September, 2021. The reason for that is that just, just looking back, I really think that if I would have the mindset that I currently have right now and just being able to, to go to the right sources, I think I would be really able to tackle and even acquire knowledge way faster. With that being said, it's hard to say. Like, like that's the thing. You never know if something is good or if something is bad. In a great scope of things, like there are many things that could have happened. Like there are so many different realities and don't really want, want to take this to the esoteric level because I don't really even uh, place much importance on that. I'd rather try to focus on results and input output equations because it, from my point of view it rather makes sense where to start there are many things where to start essentially like the biggest factor in everything which you're doing and even if, if you're a person who really wants to strive for like just go for entrepreneurship there are many things the biggest one being opportunity cost opportunity cost means that <laughs> you have certain resources and you utilize them in a certain way and at the same time, these resources could have been utilized in a different way, which could have possibly brought you much more favorable returns. In the great scope of things, the most valuable resource that you have is time. Like, regardless of how hard you try, try regardless of... You only have a limited amount of time. And... You have to think about how you use it. The biggest pitfall on university in itself is that it's very, very broad. And in the last two or three weeks where I've really um, taken my projects that I've had on the second priority or so to say, like going from a point where my focus was split from working on business projects slash working on school, to finishing my university almost fully and, and now just fully transitioning into, into business itself, it's, it doesn't really apply. Like zero, zero percent of the things I've learned there really apply. I can't really think of a single thing, regardless of how hard I'm trying, that I could just go and apply there. The thing is that you kind of like have to find a strategy that will keep working for you and just stick with that for a long enough period of time and just kind of niche down and become very become a great specialist in the, in the thing that you actually want to be doing for the rest of your life. Or, I mean, not the rest of your life. You start something and that, that thing is most likely won't be the thing that you'll actually continue with. For example, for me itself, I started like 11 projects in the past. Some of them were bigger, some of them were smaller and majority of them didn't really work out but at the same time i just learned so much um you're always starting in a position where you have certain resources it's kind of great to pay for mentorship because if you pay for mentorship then you're able to so to say leverage the time of others and at least be pointed in the right direction because it's, it's about like being pointed in the right direction and then just going the right direction for a few years at least. 
regardless of how hard you try, regardless of how hard we, you work, I mean, like the time component there is very important. And if you're an expanding industry, the biggest factor there is that actually like, so to say, if you're in the online marketing sphere and you've been here even before the whole chat GPT thing have went, uh, have gone off, like you're essentially were able to monetize on this opportunity very fast. And, and like these opportunities come and go. And there will be new opportunities in the upcoming years. So the biggest opportunity cost for me is just like essentially speaking, um, taking the university. And that's like even a mindset thing. Like these are so to say just my reflections that I have. Um, some of the biggest reasons, like essentially I even didn't plan to, how do I say, say that? Like my, the way how I was conditioned to go to university was 50-50. Um, essentially like my, the decision whether I, I would go or whether I won't go. It was like I didn't really want to go because I didn't really want to do that because I knew that when I was like 18, 19, I already knew what I wanted to do. At the same time, 50%. Um, so to see my parents and my surroundings, like essentially I'm coming from a pretty well-established family that is standing on pillars of education and stuff like that. Just, just kind of like solidly established and education was so to say a big component of, of just so to say satisfying my responsibilities in terms of just following the path that was predetermined for me. But that being said, I just really feel that it's from a certain point kind of limiting. But yeah, um, from the great scope of things, you never know whether things are good for you or for whether things are bad for you. There is even the saying that, um, like there was the story about the guy or about the, yeah, it was a man and he had a, he was a, he was a farmer and he was living on a, on his farm. And one day a horse came, uh, like he had a horse and one day the horse disappeared and the villagers came and told him like, okay, it's, it's so hor it's, it's, it's horrible that your horse escaped and it, you've lost him. Such a pity. And then a few days later, the horse came back with a few other horses, wild horses. So the farmer had like extra seven horses for free. And the villagers came and told him like, oh, that's a, such a random occurrence. Like that's so, that's a such, it's so great. Like you're, you're such a lucky person. And then the next day, the farmer's son was riding one of those horses and he fell and he broke his arm. And then the villagers came and to told the farmer like, oh, that's such a pity. And then the, a few week later, the country where the farmer was living went into war with a different country and all of the young guys, the young kids, young guys were conscripted into military. And now the young guy, the young kid of the farmer didn't have to go because he was injured. And now the villagers again came and I, they told him like, okay, that's so great. And I really freed, like, like the, the further I go, the more I realized that like, so to say the dots start connecting and we are living in a universe that, I mean, like, I'm not so up in the clouds. I would say I'm still pretty much in the ground, but live, we are living in a sphere like, okay, if we're treating time as the fourth dimension, then like things can develop in a way where we like, we are just, so to say, making the mark on, we were just spinning the point to the map every single day. And every single day, we just, so to say, have, uh, sorry, we, we have a certain span of control in terms of what decisions we take. We rarely can change our, our life from day to day, but we can change it if we keep like making small decisions for a long enough period of time. And like, that's the groundwork here. So, um, like that's even like a great question. Like your success is determined based on what you benchmark yourself against as well as what you're really seeking. I was really always that kind of a person who was really vision inspired. I always wanted to do something great. And
now I essentially created a goal for myself to get to eight figures in net worth. I don't have a I don't have a time bound, but essentially I really treat it as a worthwhile goal for me to pursue in terms of the activities and even the pathway that I'm considering taking. So to say, because I really treat that that's a great way how to create a great impact. Yeah. Great. Just to build on top of that, it's very hard to just think about whether things are good or whether they're not good because you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. And at the same time, like just looking back at your life and pinpointing that, okay, that one thing, like, okay, I didn't go to college. I went to college or my mom wasn't supportive of me or my father or my parents didn't support the path that I chose to take in my life or like this didn't support me, this didn't support me. I, I screwed up there. I failed 10 projects in the past. Like just really pinpointing to that isn't helping you and won't help you in any way achieve your goals. And if whether you achieve them or whether you won't achieve them, it's just a decision on your side. And just like kind of reboiling everything down to its purest essence is just about you. Your conditions don't matter. People with way worse conditions have made it. There was even this one boxer who went kind of famous a few years ago. He was from a village in Africa. For 30 years, he was, he was fighting um, in... Like in dirt, and then he went and became one of the big best boxers in the world, fighting. Who was that guy? Fury. I mean, you you can do a lot of stuff, and even reflecting on these past three years, I guess like the biggest reflection and biggest thought in my mind is that just time is escaping and time is running up so freaking fast that you just kind of like make this with your fingers and you're already three years older. I'm like, like literally the time from when I've been 17 to time when I'm 22 re recording this video right now is, has been just so freaking fast. And like, I'm already on a pretty, like I'm gonna turn 23 in a little more than half a year, which is just, okay, like there's just the speed and it's going faster than you would like to. Like to kind of makes you even feel or make, makes you even want to more control the flow where you're actually directing your energy to. The thing that I've started doing, I've even like, kind of like there have been instances where I've been recording on social media, where I haven't been recording on social media, that was really directed to the focus in even the, the path that I was, so to say, planning to take. The first path that I was planning to take essentially I mean, even considering in the last few months was just really going in the venture capital road, just raising capital and going the way. Uh, at the end of the day, I realized even with networking and, and speaking to a few people in, in very high circles in terms of um, friends of Peter Thiel and like guys who have made billions in Silicon Valley, et cetera, et cetera. And even like just re getting to know like the, the traditional career path of people who, okay, go to school, get to good universities, and then they try to go and launch their companies. At the end of the day, I realized like, I was just like kinda not, wasn't very sure about the direction that I wanted to take. I was just always exploring, but even though I was able to get like over, over five figures in, in, in profit per month with a certain project that I had, at the end of the day, it was just, I was kind of like, so to say, doubling with the, with the stuff because I was just aiming for a much bigger vision. I was, last year, I even kind of like went and, and met you professors from Stanford, MIT. I mean, they're kind of like, few of them are really my friends right, right now. I'm, I'm really grateful for that. One professor from MIT and the second one from Stanford. So I guess like, um, even reflecting on this, I'm just really, like those were kind of the trips that I was making in the US last year. I was just kind of going for conferences, uh, spending like, I, I don't know, like even in about two months from now, I'm just like going to Miami and, and also like paying for high level mentorships. I was in Orlando in September. The, the, the thing here is that 
at the end of the day, I realized like, okay, this isn't the type of life that I want to live. I'm 100% focused on, on creating impact at the end of the day. The thing that I'm currently doing right now is kind of taking me crazy from a certain point of view um, or driving me crazy. I mean, like, I'm not sure who, who wouldn't get, who wouldn't feel this way if like, the, I'm, I'm pretty much averaging 16 hours a day of peer work where you're actually just sitting down behind your computer and doing stuff for the past 100 days or so. The caveat to this, from the beginning, in the beginning few months, I was averaging a pretty high amount of energy invested into university. The reason for that was because I was just kind of really trying to, so to say, overshoot my limits. At the end of the day, reflecting on these 100 days in the past, I really treated it as a great investment. On the other hand, quite understandably, once you're like just, so to say, really focused on following a certain path, and just like kind of doing this, I mean, this, this for me was a really, really extreme, um, in terms of like, I really tried to optimize everything to its peers, like to, to its maximum ability. I was just trying to decrease my sleep to the ability where I would be able to actually produce as much as I can. I decrease my habits to his, like, I genuinely wake up, drink coffee and get to work. Um, and just like minimize any downtime. And at the end of the day, It's effective. And then the question is like, to what extent it's sustainable for me? I don't really want to take it to the, like literally I've invested like 1000 hours, 965, I guess, into school. And I literally treat it as a, one of the worst investments in my life. That's pretty much like half a year of no more work for normal people. Which at the end of the day kind of sucks. So the thing here is that, like for me, it's very important to invest the time into, into accurate things. And that's maybe like even doing kind of assessment of your life in terms of like just, just really selecting the periods of life in which you are. And then based on that, making certain adjustments, I'm fully for that. It's like in the beginning, you will be highly intensive and then you will be able to just, okay, make it a bit less intensive while still maintaining your results. On the other hand, if you're just growing, the more time, the more energy you invest into growth itself, the better you'll become. So it's just like that kind of finding the right, right ratio. Uh, one big factor for me, I, for example, haven't been really able to spend much time with my family. The last time I've, I saw my family was pretty much Christmas. I came Christmas like 6 p.m. home and the next day 4 a.m. I woke up and I had to get, get back to work, which are like kind of the downsides that you're experiencing as you're growing. Another downside for me is just really trying to like, like, I mean, like these questions that I, I guess it's about every single person should really answer them in which way they should really, they really want to live their life. At the end of the day, I really think that every single person contributes to the better, to making the society better. Even if you don't think like that, like essentially I have many guys, many friends who are working for the, these big tech, tech companies and so to say, they went the traditional road of getting good grades, getting into good universities, and now they're working for these big corporations. And at the end of the day, like these big corporations such as Apple wouldn't be able to produce such, a, such transformative products as they're doing without having these smart people. So like people, you have people on social media saying that universities are bad, so school system is bad. I mean, we were experiencing such a amazing growth in the last few years. And if just this tra trajectory continues, like we have, a really great chance of just enhancing the quality of life and just like really, really creating something great. And then I guess like the biggest question every single person should somehow analyze is just trying to find the balance between actually living a great life and enjoying the present and not only thinking about the future while still kind of thinking about the impact. And the biggest thing for me is just kind of 
so to say, being engaged in the social media sphere. And like th this has been something that has really interested me for a very long period of time. And it's just like, it's, it's kind of like finding the right market for you. I'm not going to be disclosing like the stuff that I'm really planning to do in the future. We'll see about that. I'm, I'm going to disclose it at the right time. As of right now, it's just like really sharing with you the thoughts that I guess I was even trying to answer. Like there were these questions that were going going in my mind as it was like, for example, Stanford and me meeting these really great people, like one of the best people in the world in terms of their specific industries and really asking myself the question, okay, like, like what do I want to devote my life to? Like just creating impact, but in what certain way? At the end of the day, I really feel that creating my, like essentially upscaling everything, what I'm currently doing is the best way for me to actually be able to create something worthwhile and bring sufficient, not sufficient, but I would say substantial impact or create the, the type of impact that I want to create with, in my life. Yeah, so I was essentially considering going Stanford and just all of these things at, this, at the same time was really the biggest, I would say even the factor was that I was just really trying to I was, I, I kind of like had a, have a privilege to ju just be surrounded by very successful people in a certain regard. At the end of the day, I realized that those people are not in any way different than you are. When we're just, like they're just people, like, like essentially that's the thing. Once you just meet all of these top players, Super Bowl winners, authors, whatever, you just realize that they're no more people. And this kind of gives you the permission of really starting thinking big. And that's even the reason why the people who don't really complicate many things are able to get, get much further ahead. For me personally, just being very honest, I really essentially many times find myself in a, in a certain way still stuck in the, in the, in the bad habits that I've gained in back in school, which were like really focused on, okay, everything has to be perfect the first time you can do mistakes. You just can't go out there and try stuff. You have to do everything the first time perfectly. And just kind of being stuck in this mindset, it's it's complete opposite type of mindset you have you have to have when you want to achieve, like when you want to scale new product, when you want to like even in terms of dropshipping, e-commerce and stuff like that. Like I have a friend, he's doing like 450K a month. He's living in Bali. We met in Bali about two years ago, one and a half actually. And like he's testing so many different things. He's just treating web pages for so many different products. And when one takes off, like it really is worth it. But at the same time, like, okay, if nine, he, he tests nine of them and nine of them don't work. I mean, like, that's the thing. Like, okay, there's risk reward. You just have to go and, and get your skin out there and just put yourself out there more often and just do, it, do this for a long enough period of time. And I really feel that this is something that school didn't really teach me despite having the access to the best people in the world in terms of like, like that's the thing for me, the biggest factor for me was essentially like considering all the options and everything else that I had on my desk. Like I was attending one of the best universities in the world. I had the professors from the best university, universities in the world. It was pretty much completely for free for me, which considering like guys in the US and like just everything else, it usually costs so much freaking money. The, the kind of like the perceived status that I really thought that I would I would gain when I once I would finish that and like just taking into consideration even my, my my family so to say being really conservative and like I'm I'm not trashing about this I'm not not trashing about education I'm not pro or against education because like so to say if you have like to live a great life my point of view maybe in the future will change to live a great life you don't really need that much. Once you have your basic needs met, once you, for example, get your income to, to 10K a month, which considering all options out there is very possible. Like, and if you just sustain this level until the end of the, your life, you'll live such a great life, like literally such a great life because you'll have everything what you need. You'll, you'll be able to go and explore trips. You've been able to like, just do so much crazy stuff. And in terms of like, even, even nice stuff, like you go to Bali and even if you want to spend a lot of money you can't like you go and you rent a v villa for 50 dollars a day and that's a huge villa 
Um, and just like like taking all of these considera- things into consideration that even, so to say, that the position where I'm right now, from a big part, greatly, it can be really contributed to the efforts and even the, the, the so to say, decisions that my parents made and the investments that they've made into me. And at the end of the day, the only thing that enabled them to do that was the education that they had and the grade that they had. So I, I don't really even think like, okay, I'm a self-made man or like something like that. That doesn't really exist because you're always surrounded by people who helped you. And I just have genuinely so many different people who helped me. And I also have many people who, who, I'm, who I helped to get, get further ahead. And in terms of like, just, okay, we have many types of, of, so to say, things you can have in your life. And even a few weeks ago, I was just really trying out, okay, getting rid of my social media uh, for, for a week or so. I guess like I, it lasted like three days or so. And I have confirmed that, at least for me, I've heard that it's, it was... It also applies to other people. We are really motivated by status and also like just seeking things and wanting things that we don't have. Like, great, okay, you buy a new, new car, but then a, a different person has, has, has a newer car. So you want that and you, so to say, won't be happy until you get that, which is a normal thing in terms of status and just tracing it back 10,000 years ago. If you were a of, of person of a lower status, you, have a, you had a lower chance of survival, which meant that you were <laughs> purposefully trying to just maximize your status other things being considered you also have for example identity the person you think you are and i'm really trying to work on that i mean like in terms of like the identity of the person who you are like all of the things you're doing all of your actions your thoughts your relationships everything else everything just just melts into the identity that you have and you can only change it by the actions that you take. Every single day, you just have the decision to make. And I mean, like, genuinely, even a few weeks ago, I just found myself wasting so much freaking time on social media. I just genuinely made a few decisions and optimizations just to get rid of that. And it's always about perfecting yourself. The biggest factor for me right now is just, so to say, capping my the capacity of work hours that I'm able to work every single day and just kind of keep it in there because I'm... By doing that, I'm able to, so to say, I have many reasons why I'm doing this. I guess I'll get to them a bit later. I'm not sure if this is the right time just to spill the beans. Or if it is, then it's a lot about momentum and just going out there and creating the momentum that that kind of like then carries carries on with you. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that. In terms of social media, I guess, even considering further, I guess like on one hand, you are able to share knowledge in a bit of a different way. You can like learn how to think differently in school. It's like, okay, there are certain things that are good. There are certain things that are not that good. It's kind of like we, I would say like decreases your vision, decreases your, decreases, is that a right word? So I guess like just, hinders your vision in terms of the the goals that you have for yourself but at the end of the day it's just you kind of have have to get through every single day making progress towards your goals and and being really okay with that you most likely won't see any big results in the first year that you're actually starting something out big caveat to this actually starting out like just really, really essentially putting everything on the line and that's that was even something i really consider in the past like I was always giving my, so, so to say, giving myself escape routes in terms of having a plan B and relying on something else. That implying, I don't really consider that I would have had a bad, bad time in, in the last few years. Living in Vienna has greatly contributed to my personal development as a person. Additionally, the few memories that I have, mainly with a few guys here, in terms of friends that I found, pretty great. 
there has been one guy who I actually traveled to Bali, Miami, and also LA to just had one of a blast together. So, so like just really great, great experiences that you, so to say, collect. But then there's the thing like, okay, you're utilizing resources, you're utilizing opportunity cost. And now, or you're just trying to get the most out of limited resources, which is basically the, the best definition of economics. And the thing is that, okay, you could have utilized these resources in a different way. You actually, but that's the thing. Um, currently, I'm, I'm really missing the hindsight because I'm just kind of um, getting from that. Environment. Yeah. At the end of the day, like even building business and just doing all of this stuff, it's a lot of anxiety, anxiety. That's the right word how to pronounce it. Okay, anxiety. It's a lot of anxiety. Just, just really being in the trench every, every single day and just, just so to see solving the fires that are, arise on a daily basis. I'm really, f I'm not really sure how I'll tackle it in terms of like essentially treating everything from a long-term perspective. I don't really want to be limited. Like that's the thing you can really be limited by listening to other people. And like right now I'm in a, such a strict information diet in terms of the resources and the, the people who I listen to, which is a great thing. Like the longer you go, the longer you really find out which people are worth to listening to right now. If I go on social media, I know that 99% of all the people who are there, I shouldn't listen to, or at least not listen to in a certain regards. There are really very few and very selected people who are really listened to. In the past, there have, there have been instances where I wasn't really willing to go all out. I've, even in fitness, it was a, like fitness was a great gig for me for a while. I've competed in one season, but essentially right after I finished that, I told myself like, I'll, I'll never do that again because it wasn't aligned with the goals that I had for myself. But that's just now speaking in a different direction. Just kind of wanted to keep it on the, on the main takeaways that I have and just kind of share with you the most valuable stuff that I have. So I would say like the first one is that leave zero in your tank, leave nothing in your tank. I guess that can really make you feel satisfied with your output and with what you've put in. I mean, not output in terms of inputs that you've put in every single day. I've been really doing this for the past 100 days. I mean, like it's, it's been a f almost a third of a year and it's just been really interesting just to observe the way how I feel about myself. And like every single day when you just go and crash in your bed exhausted, it kind of resets your, the way how you think about yourself in terms of the type of a person who you are. That being one thing, the second one thing being that you just kind of have to make a lot of sacrifices and just really determine the, the, the path that you'll follow. Yeah, there, there are just like so many, you, you're just gonna have to wiggle through a lot of stuff and then just essentially find the right stuff that's working for you. And you only get this by experience. And that's the, even the equation for me, a lot of has been taken from Alex Hormozzi. He has essentially, like I've pretty much listened to all of his podcasts out there. I mean, I'm not sure if all of them, but a huge chunk of them and other stuff as well. Recently, I just revamped. I'm gonna to speak to you about like the way how I currently split, split my time. 
just so that I'm fully transparent and like in business, social media and everything what you're doing, the biggest factor that you have is time and, and like focus because the longer you do stuff, the more the stuff compounds and the more it compounds, the more like, okay, like you're just, if you just com continue growing, growing and growing and most like mostly getting better, then it's going to be better every single year. And the most important factor about this is just like kind of really focusing your efforts in one direction, which I didn't really do in the past. And I really feel that on one hand, I underestimated the time, the time that would be required, the effort, the courage, the fourth one was focus and maybe the fifth one underestimated the sacrifice. And the sacrifice here is that you slowly have to, so to say, reject and say no to very good opportunities to be able to say yes only to the greatest ones. Great example. Let's say you're playing, let's say you have Taylor Swift or like Taylor Swift was single, like she, she, she isn't doing any other thing than singing. She isn't re repairing her cars. She isn't like a fashion designer. She isn't doing all of the other stuff. She's purely, purely po focused on just singing. She didn't go to university. She didn't like just do all of the other stuff and fluff. She's super focused on making the best music in the world. And that's what she does. Like hard, hard, work, hard, hard work is one thing. The second thing is just sticking to that for years. In the first year, like, okay, look on, on Taylor Swift started singing when she was like 10 years, maybe even less, maybe like from, from the beginning of her life. I'm not sure about that. I didn't really, I don't know much about her, but I just know that she was really dedicated to this from a young age. And that's the thing, like you don't really see the differences in the beginning, like the first year, the second year, the third year. You only kind of see the differences once you increase the time span. And until 2018, I much I, I'm not sure if I even kn knew who she was and that was six years ago meaning that until the age of 28 I pretty much didn't know who she was even though she might have been really successful but that's a different factor it's just like you kind of have to put yourself out there more that's the first factor stick to the decisions that you make and and kind of build the momentum up and just kind of not give up like it's going to be hard the way how i currently split up my my days is that like majority of the time i'm trying to really devote to to work itself that's the first part the second part being education um big caveat on education I don't read any non-fictional literature. Okay, I don't read any fictional literature. literature. I, I, I read only non-fictional literature. In the past three months, I've studied dozens of books covering multiple different thing, areas from crypto, time man uh, crypto project management, sales management, sales, direct response, everything else. And at the end of January, I literally had a look at my calendar and just like re reassessed everything what I've been doing. And I just like realized, okay, the um, time that I've been like, I'm usually listening to this stuff when I'm so to say working out or just, just eating something, but oh, because I can't really do anything else. Okay. I can't work when I'm eating. So I literally, literally, so to say, categorized it in a way or even find out that it wasn't the most clever decision from my side just to be so broad, or I just like learned that it wasn't the best for me. And what I started doing from about two, we two weeks ago is just really focusing on one direction and that being marketing in a specific field where I'm working. Like, so, so to say from the morning to till, till the end of the day, when I have a free snippets of time here and there, I'm always getting more information, getting more snippets of actual, actionable, practical, ac applicable information that I'm just able to take and go and apply. 
and all of that. Like even that, the reason for that, like I, I just kind of was listening to one part of one um, one, one, one material that I'm currently studying and even the idea to actually go and record a 40 minute video right now with you came from that. So it's just like something like, because that's the thing, you, even in the past, like I was really, really trying to figure out, okay, should you listen to books? Shouldn't you li listen to books? At the end of the day, what I really found out is that courses in themselves are the most valuable thing that you can listen to. So, course, I only listen to pretty much courses and selected books. I would say like there are five selected books that I listen to. I don't really listen to many other podcasts or anything else. I literally, tr literally, there are a few books that I listen to a lot of times and I'm listening to them every single day. And one of them being, or like two of them being Alex Hermosi, 10X Elites and, <laughs> not 10X Elites, $100 million, $100 million Leads and $100 million Offers. I've lit literally, I've read both of the books at least 10 times already and I'm, I'm just reading them every single day. Um, just going through them once, once again, pretty much like once every single day. Just in, the, just in my downtime, just in my net available time. I'm, I'm not doing that when I'm working. And the reason for that being is that like I cannot just, every single time that I just go through the book, I can like just, okay, even if it's like five minute break, I get a few snippets of information, I immediately go and apply that. And I'm like just always surrounded, surrounded myself. And the only thing that I'm thinking about is this thing, 16 hours a day. And this is the biggest factor. If you're able to do this for a long enough period of time and you're doing working on the right things, you will be able to strike more often. There was even the saying at the end of the one of Alex Ramos's books, I guess it's $100 million leads, like for sure go and check it out. Uh, huge recommendation from my side. Like there's this metaphor that, okay, imagine that you have a dice that has 100,000, or, or not 100,000, let's say one, 1,000 sides. And every single time you, you throw the die, um, it can either fall on red or green, or red or green side. When it lands on green, you win. And when it lands on, on red, you learn, which means that the red part or the red side turns green. And you, when you're starting out, you don't know how many red or green parts you have. And you even don't know how many sides you have. Like so many pe some people might have like 10 sided die, dies with a lot of green sides and then there are people who might have a 100,000 sided die and dies and like a majority of that majority of them could be red and a few only green and the only point of the game is just keep rolling the, the dice like you can't lose if you if you don't keep uh throwing the dice like eventually like even if you start with a lot of red sides in the beginning the more you throw, the more dice you throw the better you get and the more red sides turn green, which means that like the longer you're in the game, the more greens you're going to have. And which is like, it's really like that. Like the more you do, the better, you, the more mistakes you make, the better you get. And the biggest factor for me right now, even for myself is still kind of transitioning from the, so to say the school mindset really to practical application because school versus practical application are two different pools, wholly two different pools. And that there are a few kind of things that I really want to tweak with my mindset, even not, not mindset, but mainly the, the way how I apply stuff just to be more applicable. Great. I guess this was an exhaustive list of the things that I have in my, had in my mind. Other than that, just really having big standards for yourself and yeah, having big standards for yourself, not second guessing yourself about the vision that you have and being able to speak your vision out loud is very important as well. And being very fast with the way how we make decisions, like all of these things really tie, tie in together to making great impact. 
yeah, um, I would say I, I'll wrap, I'll just wrap up this video here. I shared a lot of info with you. Just thinking if there's anything else that I could just share with you at the end of this video, just something that you can just just take from with and then go and apply and crush crush it in your life or in whatever you whatever you're working on. Just be more bold and make more offers. Just be more bold, like just do more stuff. And be prepared that from the beginning, as you start, everything will be hard. And keep in mind the, thing, the fact that stuff only becomes easy the more you do it. You will always have to face your demons But it's just kind of like you just have to roll with what you have and go into action and apply stuff. So those would be the two things that I'll, I'll like to share with you. And other than that, this video was one of a blast and I hope to see you very soon. Catch you.